Hi there, on today's Top Tip Tuesday, we're going to be jumping into Nexus GPU particles again, and we'll be creating this really nice X particles sim. And the effect that we're getting here is by using the Nexus upres options. This, coupled with some movement from a Nexus Explode modifier, gives us this very nice effect. So, let's start. In our scene, we have this animated particle sim here with our blue particles, and as they go inside this field, they're turning blue. So the emitter is set up to emit particles from this text object, which is set to be the letter X. And in the emitter source, if we go to the emission tab, you can see that we are shooting out 10,000 particles and they've got zero speed. Now we've got a groups system set up here. In the emitter groups tab, we've got groups to use, particle group one and two, but we have the mode set to first group only. And what that says is when these particles are born, they're all put into particle group one. There are no particles in group two at the moment because we haven't set anything up to put the particles into group two. Now, the reason our particles are static and are not being affected by both this turbulence and this explode modifier is in both of these modifiers, if we go to the groups affected tab, they're only going to affect group two particles. And we've already established there aren't any particles in group two yet, so they aren't doing anything. And we have our static particles. OK, the way we have got our color transition working is with an NX question. And in the object tab, you can see, look, we have a field question. If the particle is within the field, then set the color to yellow. And the two fields in question, if we go to the fields tab, we've got our animated spherical field set to normal. And then we've got our random field, which we can see here, set to multiply. And the result of that, we just make those invisible, is we get that color change as the spherical field grows, but the random multiply field breaks up that edge and gives us this nice kind of random feel to the growth of the spherical field. Okay, cool. So the reason we have got this set up is instead of setting the color, we can set the group from one to two. So as the particles go inside the field, they get put into group two, and they'll then be affected by the turbulence and the explode. So let's just do that. All we need to do is change this set color to a set group. Let's drag in group two. So when they're in the field, it'll move them into group two, and they'll then be affected by the turbulence and the explode. Let's see. And yes, that is happening. So that is our base simulation, but it doesn't look great. We are then going to get the really nice detailed look from blending the position and the velocities of these base particles into a new emitter particles. So let's get that set up. What we're going to do is duplicate our emitter source. And let's just call this one. We'll rename it and call it emitter dust. And the only change we'll make, we'll do two changes. In the emission tab, instead of 10,000 particles, we'll do 50,000. The more you do here, the better detail your sim and render will be. And then in the display tab, I'm just going to reduce the size factor of those squares down to maybe 50%. Okay. Now, in these emitter destination particles, we don't want them to be moved by anything apart from the velocity and position data of the source particles. So we don't want them being moved by the turbulence or the explode. So let's go to our modifiers tab and disclude the turbulence and the explode. Very nice. And we're going to make our emitter source particles invisible. So if I hit play now, we're just going to get static particles. And these are the new ones. So now we want to blend that movement and position from the source ones. And we do that with a modifier called NX Upres. So let's go to Nexus, bring in an NX Upres. And this needs a source emitter and a destination emitter. So let's put our source in there. We'll put our destination in there. And what it does by default is every single destination particle will look for its nearest three source particles and blend by default, it's using the velocities of those. So if we just hit play, we're gonna get something that's starting, let's go in this camera, that's starting to look right, but there are gonna be some problems. So first of all, 
Um, this is affecting particles in both, let's go back to that closer camera, in both uh, groups one and two. Look, we're getting part uh, particles that are in group one are being affected by this up res and we don't want it. We only want it to kick in once they've gone into the field as well. So all we need to do is go to the NX up res. In fact, look, let's bring it below all of this movement ones. And in the NX up res, we'll go to groups affected and let's only affect group two. So then we're going to get that correct kind of field transition. Yeah, look, that's much better doesn't look quite right yet what we're going to do is go to our NX up res and instead of just using the velocity we're going to use the position as well but we're going to reduce the strength way down to like even maybe under 15 13 percent and we're going to start getting some really nice yeah look at this cool movement that's looking fantastic what we could do is add this NX color and then that is just a simple gradient mapped to the speed of the particle. And what we're going to do is just one more setting. So this looks fine, but the movement at times is a little kind of jerky. We want to smoothen this off a bit. And we can do that by going back to our up res and increasing the amount of particles it's looking for. Let's put this up to 10. And the higher this is, the smoother that animation is going to be because it's blending loads more position and velocities but obviously it'll take longer to calculate so there we go yeah so we're getting some really nice cool movement there that's looking excellent let's go to that further away camera and finally this is live and procedural if we take our nx explode modifier which is set to explode from the center of this modifier and if we move this we can change where those particles are exploding away from. So if we put it on this side, we're going to get them kind of blasting this way. Um, so yeah, it remains live and we can kind of I even have it kind of circling around like that to get some very nice effects. And these wouldn't be possible by just using an emitter and a turbulence. We can only get these cool looks by using the NX up res to blend those velocities and positions of the lower particle count emitter.